Hi friends, today we will see a simple way of uh, finding the balance condition of a Kelvin's double bridge. But before going to the Kelvin's double bridge, first we need to know or we need to understand what is the effect of the internal resistance of a battery and uh, the resistance of the galvanometer which is a detector on the balance condition. So to understand this, we I am just taking an example, a numerical example of a Wheatstone bridge. In this Wheatstone bridge, basically there are four arms. This one, these two are the two opposite arms and these two are another two opposite arms. And usually we represent the internal resistance of a battery as a series element to the battery so hence i am just representing the internal resistance of 5 ohms as a series element connected to the battery and also here we will have a galvanometer in between these two opposite ends and galvanometer also uh, for example just it is a numerical example i considered the galvanometer resistance as 5 ohms and the internal resistance of the battery also as 5 ohms and I took the arms in such a way that the bridge is balanced. We know that the condition for bridge balanced. The product of any two opposite arms must be equal to the product of the remaining two arms. This is the condition for Wheatstone bridge. If you observe this is 1 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm. 1 into 2, 2 into 10 power 6 ohm means the product of these two resistance is 2 mega ohm. Similarly, here if you find this product, it will also give you 2 mega ohm. Hence, we can say that the bridge is in balanced condition. When the bridge is in balanced condition, how the galvanometer resistance and the internal resistance of the battery is affected. That we will see now. To understand this, I just considered, I just take the use of um, loop equations, means mesh analysis. I, for this loop, for this loop, I considered I1 as the current and for this loop, I considered I2 as the current and for the third loop, I considered I3 as the current. These are the loop currents or imaginary currents and I make the equations by applying KVL these are the equations which we obtain this is the equation for the first loop and this is the equation for the second loop and this is the equation for the third loop now after solving these three loop equations we can understand that see the currents through each and every loop through the first loop i am getting 7.47 milliamperes of current through the second and third loops We'll have, we got the same value of current. Now, as I2 is flowing through this resistance, actually it is flowing in downward direction. I2 is flowing in downward direction. And through the same resistance, I3 is flowing in upward direction. So as both the currents are in opposite direction, and from this we can understand they are having same value same magnitude hence as the two currents of same magnitude and opposite direction you will have zero current through this resistance so it indicates that even though we have the galvanometer resistance present even though we have the battery resistance present in the circuit we will have zero current through this path so the galvanometer shows null deflection even though it is a lossy galvanometer lossy galvanometer in the sense even though it contains a internal resistance even though the source contain not an ideal source consider a practical voltage source or a practical battery so here i am considering a practical battery and a practical galvanometer even though i used practical battery and a practical galvanometer the balance condition is not changed so from this what we need to understand is the galvanometer resistance or the internal resistance of the battery cannot affect the null condition. That we need to understand from this concept of Wheatstone bridge. 
and this is useful in analyzing the Kelvin's double bridge in a very very simple way. Now, I will just draw a Kelvin's double bridge and use the concept which is explained earlier in order to find the null condition of Kelvin's double bridge in a very simple way. First of all, I want to draw the Kelvin's double bridge. Kelvin's double bridge has basically four arms. This is one arm and this is another arm. You will have a galvanometer here and in addition to that uh, you have one more bridge like this. So these are uh, say I am just giving uh, names for different resistors. I am just assuming this as A and this as B and this as this is the link resistance between this link and this link. Let us assume this as uh, C and this is another resistance and this is another resistance. So basically this is the unknown resistance Rx or R you can take it is. So here you will have some internal resistance of the battery and a battery connected like this. This is actually the Kelvin's uh, double bridge because here we if you observe we are having two bridges this is one bridge and this is forming another bridge so as we are having two bridges that are formed here we can call this as a kelvin's double bridge now we'll see how to solve this kelvin's double bridge easily in order to understand that just i am uh, converting the inside delta these uh, these are the delta connected resistances i am converting this inside delta into star so that you will have a resistance here and you will have a, another resistance here you will have another resistance here so when i converted this into star i can uh, just uh, remove these resistances so that uh, i will have only star connection between the points and this is also this can also be removed now if you observe these are the resistances they are star connected resistances and this resistance is connected in between uh, a and b hence uh, this resistance value is uh, a b by a plus b plus c and you will have another resistance this is connected in between a and c Hence, this star uh, star resistance value is AC by A plus B plus C. This is uh, these expressions can be obtained from delta to star conversions, and this is connected in between B and C. So it is BC by uh, A plus B plus C. These are the three star connected resistances values. Now, if you keenly, if you Focusly observe this bridge. It looks like a Wheatstone bridge. See this two combination the Combination of these two resistances is one arm and the combination of these two resistances is another arm This is another arm and this is another arm. You have a resistance which is in series with the galvanometer Just now we observed that the resistance in series with the galvanometer cannot affect the null condition hence we can neglect this resistance so we can consider only this and this now by changing means uh, uh, by converting it into a Wheatstone bridge we can obtain the balance condition easily if you observe these two now are the opposite terms and these two now are the opposite terms the product of the opposite terms must be equal according to the Wheatstone bridge null condition so I will say now the null condition can be obtained like this so P into this is one arm and this total resistance value 
how these two are connected these two are connected in series so i can write this as p into s plus bc by a plus b plus c and it is equal to this is these two are the another two opposite terms and this is q and this is uh, r into oh, sorry as these two are in series r plus ac by a plus b plus c so q into r plus ac by a plus b plus c so this is the null condition by considering this bridge as a wheatstone bridge how because uh, this resistance is in series with the galvanometer hence we can neglect this resistance during the null condition so the, we can neglect this arm and if you consider this it contains four arms basically these two are the opposite arms and these two are the opposite arms this is the source and we already seen that the source internal resistance and the galvanometer resistance or the resistance which is in series with the galvanometer cannot affect the null condition now we'll see uh, now we will derive this condition easily by converting this star into delta a very simple way of finding the null condition of kelvin's double bridge uh, instead of uh, finding the voltages in between nodes of the galvanometer and equating this, that that uh, it takes some time but it, it requires very less time uh, to get the null condition now what i need is actually the r value if i want r value i just send the remaining all terms to rhs sorry lhs so i will get r plus this is r so r plus ac by a plus b plus c will give us if you send this q to denominator you will get p by q into s plus bc by a plus b plus c right because q is in multiplication here when you send it to lhs it will it will get divided what is the first term you will get p by q into s and r plus ac by a plus b plus c is equal to p by q into s plus uh, if you send if you multiply with this p by q you will get p by q into b c by a plus b plus c and again sending this term to here you will get r as p by q into s plus uh, you will get this term as the negative term when you send this term to rhs you will get here minus ac by a plus b plus c from these two uh, if i take uh, bc as common bc by a plus b plus c from these two terms if i take this term as common you will get bc by a plus b plus c what is the first term e by q minus as i took b common i will get b in the denominator c as it is so you will get a so this is the null condition of the kelvin's double bridge which can be easily obtained by knowing three by knowing two small facts one fact is the battery internal resistance cannot affect the null condition this is one fact the another another fact is galvanometer resistance so by knowing these two facts we can understand that the battery internal resistance and the galvanometer resistance cannot um, affect the null condition by knowing that fact we can convert the kelvin's double bridge into again wheatstone bridge and find the null condition in a easy manner and also we need to understand that kelvin's double bridge is not a special bridge which is not which is designed in a special manner but it is just the modification of a wheatstone bridge i hope you understand how to obtain the null condition of this bridge easily thank you very much